George Polya was a Hungarian mathematician who is famous for his work on problem solving in mathematics. He emphasized a sensible approach to problem solving that utilized four simple principles. Understand the problem, devise a plan, carry out the plan, and reflect review your solution. Let's consider this scenario. For her workout, Ennis jogs two miles to the beach every morning with her dog, Hunter, maintaining a steady pace of five miles per hour. However, after the first mile, Hunter sprints off at a constant eight miles per hour until he reaches the beach. At the same speed, he then immediately turns around and sprints back to Ennis. Once Hunter reaches Ennis, he turns and heads back to the beach again. Hunter continues this back and forth behavior at a constant eight miles per hour until Ennis and Hunter reach the beach together. Determine the overall distance Hunter eventually ran. The first principle of Polya's method is to understand the problem. So what does this mean? For this problem, it goes beyond simply recognizing that a young woman is going for a jog with her dog to the beach. Let's look at some important statements. First, there is distance involved. We have two miles here, one mile here, and finally we have a distance that needs to be determined. In algebra, one way to measure distance is its relationship to time and rate of speed. The proportion equation d is equal to r times t, where d is the distance, r is the rate of speed, and t is the time, models this relationship. So we'll utilize this equation to help determine the solution. As we reread our scenario, we can see that we have a rate of speed here of 5 miles per hour and another of 8 miles per hour. However, the variable time is unknown. The second principle is devise a plan. Now that we have an understanding of the context of the problem, we have to determine a plan of attack. Because distance needs to be determined, we'll certainly use that model. However, Polya provides only general and pragmatic suggestions for problem solving that are not fully perfected. There is no specific process, only suggestions. He leaves the details up to the individual problem solver. But one technique that works well is to sketch or doodle what is occurring in the scenario. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, as long as it helps provide perspective on what is developing. So we'll do that. Now certainly since the objective is to determine distance, the sketch should display a simple line illustrating the distance covered by Ennis and Hunter. We can see how this basic illustration connects the introduction of the problem. Using a simple line is a very practical but useful effect. Also, we can mark the one mile point of the distance since this is the point at which Hunter sprints away from Ennis. Now that we have a firm concept of what the problem entails, we start carrying out our plan. We know that Ennis and Hunter begin their jog to the beach running at five miles per hour. Using the distance equation, we can determine the time it took them to run the first mile. Substituting in the values for distance and rate of speed, we then solve for time. We can see that time is one-fifth, and since speed is in miles per hour, it took them one-fifth of an hour, or 12 minutes, to run the first mile. Of course, after the first mile, Hunter sprints off at 8 miles per hour, running back and forth between the beach and Ennis until they reach the beach together. It's at this point, however, where people may think that the individual intervals that Hunter traveled back and forth need to be calculated. These individual intervals rely on the distance that Ennis has traveled at the points they meet up. This creates an oscillating effect, which requires much more sophisticated mathematics, which Polya undoubtedly would suggest avoiding. Nonetheless, simply observing our work so far, there is a relationship between the first and second miles, so we return to the distance equation. We simply need to know how long or the time Hunter has been running when Ennis reaches the beach. 
Because Ennis runs at a constant five miles per hour, she covered the next mile to the beach in the same amount of time as the previous mile, 12 minutes, which of course is one-fifth of an hour. Using the distance equation again, unlike the previous mile where we solve for time, here we solve for the distance. The rate of speed is 8 miles per hour, and the time is one-fifth hour. Thus, Hunter ran 8 fifths miles, or 1.6 miles. We add this to the first mile he ran with Ennis, and Hunter ran a total distance of 2.6 miles. This leads us to Polya's fourth principle, reflect, review your solution. Problem solving is a process that has to be developed and practiced. Reflection on past experiences and knowledge, such as using the distance equation, to help solve other problems is a healthy progression. As confidence grows from one problem to the next, our methods and solutions improve.